That is for Zakah to cure our greed When we give our money to those in need That is for Salamun Alaikum Peace be with you Wa Alaikum Shah is for Shams the shining sun Which Allah placed for everyone And so is for Salah for when we pray Assalamu Alaikum, I'm Zafar Bangash Welcome to Ramadan Journey a program that explores the various dimensions of the month of Ramadan as well as uh, the Quranic message in its uh, numerous uh, imperatives. We know that Ramadan is intimately linked with uh, the Noble Quran, the first few ayats of which were revealed to the Noble Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the solitude of the cave of Hira. Ramadan, of course, also is linked with uh, developing our taqwa as well as uh, a number of very important events that occurred in early Islamic history, particularly the Battle of Badr as well as the liberation of Makkah. But Ramadan, of course, is most intimately linked with the Noble Quran, and it is to these themes that we are going to turn our attention in order to get a better understanding of the message of the Noble Qur'an because we ought to be engaging Allah's Noble Book in a much more profound way. And to help us understand the message of Ramadan, more particularly the message of the Noble Qur'an, we are joined by Imam Muhammad Al-Asi, who is a fellow at the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought, He's a scholar and author of numerous books, the most famous of which, of course, is The Ascendant Quran, Realigning Man to the Divine Power Culture. Six volumes of this monumental tafsir have already been published. The seventh is close to completion, and we hope other volumes will be published uh, in the near future. So, Imam Muhammad Alasi, uh, welcome to the program. The pleasure is mine. Um, let us start off with um, one issue and clarify it at the outset in, in this program, in this episode, and that is this uh, issue of uh, Islam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as deen. But when we see many English translations, it is translated as religion. Is Deen, religion, or is it different? And if it is, how is it different? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi huda. There's been a, an ingrained uh, miscue as to the translation of the word deen into the English language. Deen is a frequently occurring Quranic word. It is mentioned in quite a uh, number of surahs in the Quran. And in the tafsir that uh, I've been working on all of these years, I avoided using the word religion uh, to correspond to the word deen, uh, simply because religion is a word and a definition that belongs specifically to Judeo-Christian uh, history and theology. Um, and in this respect, the word religion in and of itself carries in its meaning a distance from civil life and from uh, administrative life and from social life. So in other words, it has a very narrow definition, narrow focus. It has a much narrower fo focus uh, and range than the word Dean. Dean, uh, if you can recall in a previous presentation, uh, we made uh, reference uh, to 
quite a number of issues. Uh, one of them was when the um, Arabians came and said uh, that they are Muslims, uh, they are mu'mins. And the Qur'an from on high was revealed to correct that statement and say to them that, no, you're not mu'mins, between parentheses, yet. Uh, rather, state the fact and say that you are Muslims. And we said, when we commented and explained this, that in a civil sense, they are members of the larger community of uh, Muslims and committed Muslims, but they themselves are not mu'mins, they are not committed Muslims. So uh, Islam uh, is, a, uh, is a civil uh, description of a citizen of a state. It's not, quote-unquote, the ritualistic and religious uh, definition of that person. And in, a, in another ayah in the Qur'an, Allah Jalla Sha'nuhu says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا uh, It is uh, on this day, it is today, that I have completed your deen. And I have uh, finished uh, the process of providing you with my bounty. And I am satisfied for you having is al Islam as a deen. So, how would we define deen then? Uh, deen is a social um, cohesion of those who profess their commitment to Allah. Could you elaborate? What is social cohesion? Yeah, mean? It, it means it's the system within which all of the details, uh, whether they are the moral details or the legal details of our relationship with Allah, are organized and proportionately coordinated. The, the, the probably, I, I'm trying to use less... Uh, philosophical and less legalistic words. Probably the best word that would capture the, um, the meaning of deen in English would simply be system. But it is not, you know, a mechanical system. It is not a, uh, strictly speaking, a legalistic system. It is a coherent system of different components that cover the range of human efforts and activities. Some people have described it as a comprehensive way of life. Would that be... That's, so, even... that's so general mm -hmm. as to... Uh, you see, many times some, of, some people who want to have a better translation of Quranic words, they, they use... Uh, a, a word or a wording, a few, few words, that are so general that it does not uh, bring into focus the elements of the meanings of the word. So if instead of saying a comprehensive way of life, which I'm not saying it's not, uh, I'm not saying this is false and incorrect, uh, obviously it captures some elements of a system. When you speak about a system, you're speaking about uh, a way of life. And then when you say a comprehensive way of life, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, bring us nearer to the, uh, uh, to the obligations and to the um, elements that go into deen. Let me, let's be more specific about this. Let's go to the short surahs in the Qur'an. Uh, many Muslims, they have memorized these short surahs so that they can identify with them. Uh, one of the ayat, uh, or one of these short surahs is, أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينَ have you, have you to consider a person who puts the lie to a deen? Mm -hmm. Okay, the, this is a question, and it's yeah. to the Prophet, and to you, and me, and every Muslim. 
have you taken into consideration those uh, or he who um, is contrarian to a deen? Mm -hmm. uh, so who, who is he? Uh, we're, we're here standing in anticipation of the answer. Then the following ayah uh, gives us the answer. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ It is he who, um, who repels the orphan. وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينِ It is he who does not insist on feeding those who need food in this, in this context. Uh, or those who, uh, in addition to their efforts in life, they are working, they are struggling and all this, but at the end of the day they can't find enough food to feed their family. So there, a deen, a deen uh, or denying a deen is to disregard the orphan and to overlook those who are deprived of food and water and nourishment. Th this amount, see, this is, a, this is a social component of social life. If a person is neg neglecting these social responsibilities, he is tantamount or equivalent to a person who doesn't care anything about the meanings of deen. I'd, I'd like to... Um uh, hold you there. Um, we will return to the elaboration of this aspect um, further uh, because it is important that we look at it in, in a total sense and understand uh, the meanings uh, that you are trying to convey. Um, we are, uh, you are watching uh, Ramadan Journey and uh, my guest of course is uh, Imam Muhammad Al-Asi. Uh, we are discussing this uh, concept of deen uh, to look at it in a way that um, it brings out, uh, uh, brings out its total meaning rather than this very simplistic meaning of religion, which essentially, as Imam Muhammad Alasi said, is linked to Judeo-Christian uh, teachings and understanding. Um, we are going to take a short break. Uh, you are watching Ramadan Journey, but please don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. Oh, Ramadan. Welcome back, uh, and if you have just joined us, uh, you are watching Ramadan Journey. Uh, I'm Zafar Bangash, and my guest is uh, Imam Muhammad Al-Asi. Uh, Imam Muhammad Al-Asi, uh, before we uh, went uh, for the break, uh, you were uh, explaining uh, the, the uh, meanings of the ayats uh, of this uh, surah, Ara'ayt al-lazi yukazzibu bid-deen, fadalik al-lazi yadu'u al-yateem, wa la yahuddu ala ta'am al-miskeen. So here, as you said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poses this question, do you know about you know, the person or the one who denies deen? And then the description comes that the one who uh, repels or uh, ignores the, 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 the orphan and does not make an effort to feed the, the, those who are uh, hungry or in need. Uh, if you would please continue with that. Yes, so uh, the, the understanding here, if we were to put our minds into the meanings of the ayat in the Qur'an, we would uh, conclude that a deen is, has a definition within uh, the social responsibilities of our lifetime. And these social responsibilities fall within a, a coordinated, coordinated body of information that comes to us from Allah. All of that put together uh, becomes the meaning of a deen. Uh, maybe another way of uh, approximating this meaning to the uh, viewers is to say a deen to society is what al iman is to an individual um, we 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 elaborated uh in the tafsir on the meaning of al iman as a secure uh commitment to the power presence 
and the authority of Allah. Uh, that's the meaning of Iman. So um, if we move from the context of an individual into the context of society, then we have in proportion to that the meaning of deen. Um, in one of the ayat of the Qur'an, uh, in which um, there was a, an exchange of uh, words between the Prophet and um, uh, the uncle of the Prophet, who came to him on behalf of the leaders of Mecca, and offered him um, a very generous uh, range of uh, options to cease and desist from pursuing this Islamic objective uh, of having a deen in Mecca and beyond. Uh, and that offer was, look, if, if what you are asking for is wealth, uh, then you know we're willing to give you as much money as you want. This was the offer that the Meccan chiefs had brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's that's, uncle. That's right. And if what you want is uh, to rule over us, uh, we'll put you in the position of ruling over us. But they went that far? Yes, of course. And look what they're talking about. They're not talking about rituals. This is very important to notice, and it's absent from many people's attention. They were offering him uh, what amounts to very unlimited uh, economic uh, and political. And the, th you know, the third um, uh, statement in this offer was, if you know, what you are um, saying to us and the rest of the people is a result of some medical problem, uh, maybe the jinn has obsessed you or something like that, then we are willing to uh, call upon the best uh, physicians in the land uh, to treat this condition that you may have. Well, besides this, and this you know, could be um, uh, an, a, a consideration that they thought the leaders of Mecca thought about before they worded this presentation to the Prophet. But when they're offering him uh, a, the highest political position in the land, when they're offering him uh, an amount of wealth and money that puts him you know, beyond any measure of need or want, uh, by far probably making him the richest man also in that country, so to speak, we realize that these proposals to the Prophet himself were political in nature and economic in nature. They had nothing to do with rituals. They had nothing to I do mean, with I rituals. Mean, they, didn't, they didn't come and ask him, stop praying or stop... <laughs> That's right. They, they weren't concerned with that. So the answer uh, in, to respond to them was the short surah that many Muslims have memorized. And it says... قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدْ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدْ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ So this is a, uh, an address to the kafirs right now who are in uh, a theoretical and a philosophical and an ideo ideological. Remember if we go back to the definition of the, the kuffar, they are in, this, in these modes of opposition against the, the, uh, the Prophet and, the, and the, the Book of Allah and the committed Muslims. They made this offer. So it says, you know, I am not going to conform to your standards and your values and your basics. And you're not like in likewise, you're not going to conform to my, to my standards, my values, and my basics. Mm -hmm. So these standards and values and basics that uh, are the social rubric of society are tantamount to the system that we are speaking about. So the ayah ends with Lakum Dinukum, you have your deen, meaning you have your political ideology, your economic uh, framework, Waliyadin, and to me, 
is the the deen, My deen. which is of its own peculiar political features, its own economic uh, definitions. So the response, just like we saw in Surah Al-Ma'un, the ones that we quoted in the first uh, part of this presentation, we spoke about the orphans and those who are in need. Yes. Uh, these are tended to within a political philosophy that has an economic program, which when placed, when put together, constitute the overall system that we should understand as a deen. And may I add here also in this short surah, Surah Qul Ya Ayyuh Al Kafirun, or Surah Al Kafirun, that uh, the word Ta'budun is mm. mentioned here, mm. uh, and Al Ibadah is not worship. Mm. Because uh, if, if Ibadah is worship, then Deen becomes religion. Right, And we avoided the word worship when we referred to ibadah the same way we avoid the word religion when we refer to deen. Yes. So if uh, refresh our, uh, our memories and, and our viewers, uh, then how would we define ibadah and uh, tabudun in, in, this, in this ayah, yeah. this surah? The, the, the word ibadah is the noun which means conformity and compliance. And the word... Ta'budun in this area is the verb which means uh, to conform and to comply. So in this larger uh, organized or thought out quote unquote way of life which becomes the systemic uh, allocation of uh, responsibilities and duties and rights in this uh, the the word ibadah conveys the meaning of you know all of us use the word ibadah when we yes. when we read the Quran in Surah Al Fatiha. Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in. You alone do we conform to, not worship. Yes. Anyone who's using the word worship is just borrowing Judeo Christian terminology and placing it, uh, imposing it on the Quran and the Sunnah. Something. You know, we should cease to do. Don't do it anymore. Understand these words with their original meanings and their original definitions. Right. I, I think uh, much of our problem uh, springs from the fact that um, we are, are trying to understand the Quran in a language and through a tradition that is contrary to the values of, of the Quran and of Islam. And uh, that is where our problem springs from. And obviously, this sort of leads to the question or to the point that uh, for Muslims to truly understand the message of the Quran they ought to understand the Arabic language they ought to become familiar with it and I know that I'm uh, I'm just as guilty as anybody else I mean you know I'd make this confession but I think it really points to the fact that we are deficient in understanding the Quranic message properly because we are trying to understand it in a language that has no, no relation to to this message so uh, you know this is really very enlightening um, I'd like to, I'd like to thank you for um, uh, you know enlightening us and our viewers on this point, and inshallah we will continue from this uh, further. We've been uh, talking to uh, Imam Muhammad Al Asi, and we have looked at this very uh, important uh, aspect and concept uh, in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala refers to Islam as Deen repeatedly in the Quran. There are many ayats and. Uh, Imam al-Asi has emphasized for us that it is completely wrong to define it as religion. So I think we need to move away from these inadequate and um, uh, not uh, appropriate uh, explanations or translations and get to the, to the proper understanding of the Quranic concept so that we can get closer to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you've been watching uh, Ramadan Journey. Uh, we have come to the end of uh, this episode and we've been uh, considering uh, various uh, aspects of uh, the Noble Book of Allah, the Quran, which of course was revealed in the month of Ramadan. Uh, but that, that's all the time that we have for this episode. I hope you will join us again and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your fasts and your ibadat in the comprehensive sense and that you will find uh, these uh, programs 
enlightening and thought provoking. I'm Zafar Bangash. Thank you and wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is for zakah to cure our greed When we give our money to those in need Sa'is for salamun alaykum